Hey, this is Olivier, and you're watching the Internet of Things show. Today, we have Marcello with us, and Marcello will uh, present an introduction of Microsoft IoT Central. Hey, Marcello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. So what do you do at Microsoft? I'm a program manager in the Azure IoT team, okay. and I have worked at the development of Microsoft IoT okay. Central. I hear an accent. Not that I have one, <laughs> me either. You're coming from Italy, right? Yes, I am. Cool, awesome. Um, so what is Microsoft IoT Central? So Microsoft IoT Central is the new SaaS solution from Microsoft uh, that everybody can use in order to create IoT applications. So some people might not be super aware. What is SaaS? SaaS means software as a service. Mm -hmm. And basically, it means that uh, uh, you won't be exposed to all the complexities of a standard IoT solution, but Microsoft will take care of all those complexities. So on the, your scale, the scaling, the region where things are running and things like that. Exactly. You just choose uh, your region, mm -hmm. and in terms of scaling the solution, this is something that Microsoft uh, will completely uh, uh, do on your behalf, so that uh, you can connect one device, uh, a thousand devices, a million devices, uh, we scale accordingly. Okay. But I guess I pay accordingly as well. Right. Yeah, that's another very interesting innovation from IoT Central. You won't pay in, uh, depending on your consumption, okay. but you will pay just uh, based on the number of devices that uh, you have connected. Okay, awesome. Well, I think the best way to tell people what IoT Central is about is to show them, right? Indeed. Okay, let's, let's do it. that. So I have here uh, uh, just a splash page for people to create an application. And uh, uh, you just have to type the name of your application and the URL where you want to reach the application. Uh, Does and it have to be unique? Right, it has to be unique because that's a public endpoint, yes, right? Yes, that's okay. the, public, uh, the public URL of, of your application. Okay. Uh, and then you just select the region uh, that you want to deploy your application on. Okay. And then uh, you just select the template later that you want to start with. Okay. So I see I see few regions here, uh, but like Azure being available like across like something like 27 of them. So that does that mean we will have more options here? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, these are the regions that uh, are available uh, in the public preview uh, uh, mode of IoT Central, uh, but uh, you know over time we will increase uh, uh, the number of regions uh, where IoT Central will be available. Got it. And then you mentioned the template. So we have three of them right now. Can you tell us real quick what they are about? Absolutely. Basically a template uh, is a starting point for you to create an application uh, based on uh, your needs. So you can start uh, with a blank uh, custom okay. application so that you can uh, um, customize it uh, 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 as much as you want. Uh, or you can start with a sample. We have, uh, for now, two samples. Uh, one is a Contoso sample, basically is a fully fleshed out application uh, uh, that you can uh, uh, start in order to see uh, what does a fully fledged application looks like. Okay. Or uh, you can start uh, with a dev kit application. Okay. Uh, if you have uh, either a Raspberry Pi or an MX chip dev kit, uh, you can connect them without actually having to do anything. No code. No code. That's uh, almost IoT disappointing. Also, yes, That's what it looks like. I'm sure people still get excited, though. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. So we will start uh, with a free trial because IoT Central actually comes with a free trial. Everybody okay. can can try it out without ac actually having to spend any money. Uh, Thirty days uh, uh, and uh, the ability to connect up to ten devices. Okay. Um, so we cr just create an application based on the Contoso template. Okay. Uh, and just in a matter of a few seconds, uh, uh, we actually create uh, uh, a fully featured application. Actually, seconds, yeah. Yeah. It was just seconds. We it's didn't literally. edit that. It was like all live. Awesome. Okay, so show us around. So that's the Contoso sample. That's the template where things are already been put in there for you, right? Yes. So. The point where I land uh, when I create a new application is the home page. Basically, the home page uh, is the starting point uh, of your application where you find uh, all the links uh, to what's important uh, inside mm. the application for you to, uh, okay. to look at. Uh, the home page is customized. Mm -hmm. In this case, comes with a template. But mm -hmm. you can edit and customize it depend depending on what uh, uh, do you want to grant quick access to your users. OK. Oh, yeah. So you mentioned users. That's interesting. And you will customize that dashboard for users. So you have a notion of exposing that application to several types of users, right? Absolutely, yes. Every user uh, is authenticated with their Active, Active Directory account okay. uh, and uh, is granted a role that defines what they can see and do in this inside the application. OK. So but that's the landing page for whether the role you have, right? So you have different roles. I figure the one who's going to like create the solution, the one's going to manage it, the one's going to operate. It, right? Absolutely, yes. So but that's the same URL. You just log in with a different account, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to present something different. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And the ability to customize it further is something that will be uh, increased uh, in future releases of IoT. Okay. okay. 
Can we dive in some of the tabs Absolutely. Here? On, uh, on the left here, uh, we have uh, the menu where you uh, are able to uh, reach all the resources that are make available in IoT Central. Okay. Uh, we saw uh, you know, the home page. Uh, then the next uh, is the device explorer. Basically, okay. over here, you have uh, the list of your connected devices, whether they are simulated, because yes, IoT Central brings simulation uh, as okay. part of its features. Okay. So before even connecting a real device, uh, you can simulate it. Mm -hmm. um, and also, uh, you can describe different device types so that uh, if you have different devices that you connect to your mm -hmm. application uh, you can have them uh, in this uh, in this menu over here and explore and navigate them uh, okay. depending on what you want to reach yeah so i see we have your uh, refrigerated vending machine you can then have a pizza vending machine you can have something different absolutely Next absolutely okay, got and it. when you you know find the device that uh, that you want to you know to see in uh, in uh, in additional details uh, you just click on it okay. and you reach uh, uh, basically uh, the page uh, where you see all the details and all the attributes uh, 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 about that device. Uh, sure. And uh, being a simulated device, as you can see here, you see that simulation already kicked in with the creation of the template. Uh, yeah. And so depending on the measures uh, that are part of uh, this specific mm -hmm. device, uh, you will see the data coming in. Got it. OK, so you see real-time data coming from a device and being being displayed here right what exactly else, what else can you see for so the you have available a dashboard for mm -hmm. uh, for this device uh, where again uh, you can see a completely customized view of everything that is relevant uh, of this device um, okay. and it's about of course telemetry but also all the other properties and attributes uh, uh, that uh, make this device uh, this device okay so basically for for all the vending machines, I could actually navigate through this dashboard and see the, the, the details of each of these vending machines up there. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Each vending machine uh, will have this dashboard populated okay. with the data uh, related to that okay. uh, machine. So, yeah. so in addition to uh, the dashboard, uh, uh, there are other resources that are interesting to uh, access directly from here. Mm -hmm. For example, the properties uh, uh, that are basically all the additional metadata and information about that specific device. Okay. So for example, what's the model, when this device is, was manufactured, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. you, are, you will be able to customize these fields uh, depending on the type of metadata data that you are interested in tracking for this specific category of device. So that means you can do your asset management through uh, the Microsoft IoT Central. Exactly. App. Especially because uh, uh, based on the metadata that you described mm -hmm. over here, you have a search tool uh, that will enable you to search uh, for devices based on uh, property matching. Got it. Okay. OK, interesting. Then you have settings. Settings uh, is very interesting because it what enables you to control remotely your connected devices. So basically, you can describe here uh, uh, the properties uh, whose value you want to transfer back to the devices mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, edit them here. Like uh, in this case, uh, one setting is the fun speed of okay. this uh, vending machine. Okay. Uh, we change the value, we update it, uh, okay. and in a matter of seconds, uh, the property is synced uh, to the device, uh, Got it. and uh, basically you are changing a property and uh, and pushing it back to. The so device. basically, with settings and properties and the measurements, you basically have a digital representation of the device, right? That's absolutely correct. Cool, awesome. What else do you have in there? Over here, uh, we have uh, also rules, uh, okay. and basically based uh, on uh, uh, the information and the attributes that I described for a sp specific device, okay. uh, uh, I can define conditions uh, that will trigger actions uh, Okay. Uh, based on uh, the, the the behavior that I want to grant to this specific okay. device. Okay. So if I click on rules, so you will see that I don't actually have uh, rules that are active yet okay. over here. Okay. But uh, what I can do, I can uh, go in edit mode mm -hmm. or in builder mode, like we call it, okay. uh, and I can see change hat. Exactly. You're, you're now a different person. Okay. Exactly. And I can see either uh, rules that are already here, but not yet active, okay. or I can create a new rule. In this mm -hmm. case, let's just create a new simple rule. Uh, and I can select uh, from different types of rules. Mm -hmm. uh, some are available today, or, and uh, some more will be available over time. Uh, this is one of the other advantages of being a SaaS uh, mm -hmm. product, uh, that we will be able to update uh, and add additional features. Mm -hmm. And everybody will uh, be sure to always use the latest version of the product. And so they don't need to redeploy a new solution or to manually say, update my application. Absolutely. It will just Absolutely. Work. It will just work, and uh, just new features will and we uh, won't will break them. And we won't break them, absolutely. <laughs> That's kind of our job. That's cool. So in this case, let's select a telemetry rule mm -hmm. that basically will be a rule based on uh, the telemetry measurements uh, coming in from a device. Okay. So let's give it a name. For example, for example temperature. temperature alert. 
I decide to enable this rule for every device. Okay. Then I start to describe my condition, so okay. the condition that I want to monitor. So it's based on telemetry, so, so I can select uh, uh, between all the telemetry measurements that I've, I mm -hmm. have available in that device. Uh, it's temperature. Yeah, and, I and this is actually populated based on the definition of the device type, That's right? correct. Okay, that's correct. It. It's based on the properties that I described in the template. Mm -hmm. um, I can see the temperature is greater, in this case, than a specific value, okay. let's say 30. Okay. Then uh, I describe uh, what's the action. And again, I can choose between different actions, uh -huh. and we will make available more and more actions uh, okay. over time. So for example, we are already planned uh, to add uh, a connector with flow, so that would, as an action, mm -hmm. you will be able to trigger your Microsoft Flow. Uh, Got um, it. Got flow. it. And what I see as well, even more interesting, that you can hook up into dynamics. Uh, like I can see that in a real scenario where you have to trigger a maintenance item or workflow, you can create the ticket directly from your uh, solution, I guess, right? That's correct, exactly. Okay. This is a, one of the core scenarios that, uh, that will be uh, enabled by this, uh, this feature. So awesome. in this case, uh, let's pick a simple one, for example, email notification. Okay. I can add, in this case, uh, the recipient for my okay. notification. Okay. So let's say Satya that uh, Nadella at Microsoft it's no. Satya. <laughs> <laughs> let's better not, uh, <laughs> not notify him of uh, a fault in our system. So it can be, he knows their demos. Right? Jane Doe at Microsoft.com. I can add uh, a note mm -hmm. in uh, uh, so that, uh, for example, the temperature is too high. Okay. And uh, at this point, uh, I just have to save my rule. rule. Yeah. And the rule will be right away active, uh, okay. in this case, based on uh, the simulated data of this device. Mm -hmm. So the next step, uh, once uh, I am basically satisfied with uh, the, the customization of my specific simulated device, yeah, uh, yeah. what I can do, I can go back uh, uh, to my device explorer, uh -huh. and I can think about adding a real device. Okay. So I do that very simply, just by adding a new real device from okay. this menu. Okay. And uh, you will see that I see exactly the same uh, uh, wireframe, uh, okay. not populated with simulated data, mm -hmm. but with the option of uh, getting the information on how to connect a real device. Got it. In this case, uh, what I have is basically the connection string uh, that I have to use uh, on my device uh, in order to connect it. Now, what's interesting here is that uh, if people are familiar, I guess, with Azure IT Hub and the other Azure IT technologies, um, Microsoft IT Central is based on these, right? So basically that connection string is something that is to be used on a device that runs the SDK for IT Hub, I guess, and then from there the device will be connecting. Exactly, that's correct. Uh, yeah. uh, if you have a device that uses our SDKs uh, and uh, is already maybe working with your custom IoT Hub, mm -hmm. you just have to change your primary connection string and it will just work with IoT Central. That's interesting. I guess it's just the format of the data that you're sending it needs to be in the format that the, the solution expects. Right? Yes, even though the format that is expected uh, uh, from uh, our Microsoft IoT Central uh, is pretty standard and simple, so that uh, we see that in many cases, it just works. OK. Well, that's pretty cool. So I will be able to then copy, copy and, uh, and paste on my device. Uh, device and that, yeah. my device will uh, uh, connect to the IoT mm. Hub uh, that will be part of my IoT Central solution yeah. uh, and, and send data yeah. right away. So I understand it's in, so I, my stuff IoT Central is in preview, so it's not fully featured. But um, are we thinking of some sort of integration with the, the device provisioning service in the future so that you can actually do that at scale? Because manually taking a connection string is not like super practical. Absolutely, yes. The integration with uh, the provisioning service uh, is one of the uh, core features that we have in roadmap for the next uh, uh, re releases of, uh, of the product. So okay. you will see that, that support uh, uh, rather soon. Awesome. Well, I think that was a, a great introduction to the Microsoft IT Central uh, SaaS offering. And uh, I hope Marcello will see you again soon for more details and, and information about IoT stuff. Absolutely. We'll be happy about that. Thank, Thank you, you for having me.